So let's talk about impressionism. So first off, I did an impressionism on Friday while I was waiting for uh, people to attend, and I, I usually mess around in Sibelius during that time. And as you can see, I did an impressionism. So the first thing to notice is I put in some C naturals, wrote a piece, a piece called Lo, with, an, with a marking here, Ila Swaf, and, and uh, various elements of impressionism here. C naturals here, and that is hinting at impressionism. Uh, well, it's hinting at the mode of Dorian. And here was the piece. And that's as far as I got into the composition. But there's a lot of different elements of Impressionism going on in this piece. The first one, of course, being the modality. Now, if we go to the notes, the Google Doc, which the link is always available via the uh, description of the YouTube video that will go out of this. And if you're looking here, Impressionism always has a hazy quality which is because the paintings themselves were hazy the idea being that you are giving the impression of seeing the thing so you don't have you don't need line art you just need a hazy quality to your painting so with music you don't need 5-1 all the time to call it music to call it classical music even the hazy quality is that you are painting with your music there's never necessarily a clear tonic sometimes there is sometimes there's not Sometimes there's multiple tonics, so you could have, say, uh, he liked doing, say, E flat minor and G flat major as the two tonics he might switch between in a piece. And then the use of non-tonal scales. A diatonic mode, for example, which is a seven note scale that may or may not have a leading tone, is an example of a non-tonal scale because the modes were not originally intended to be based around the Shinkarian 1451. In fact, they weren't chord based in their in the onset of the use of modes. Then the pentatonic scales, which is which is also the basis for the blues scale and synthetic scales. Now, there is a synthetic scale I didn't talk about in my previous lecture because it was not used in Impressionism. I'm going to talk about it today. So the diatonic modes here, each white note corresponds with a specific mode. If you're playing on the piano, for example, and you play C to C, you've played the C major scale, which is the Ionian scale. And if you look here on the document, you'll see all of them defined. Now, there is something worth note that if I can conform every mode to white note to white note in the C major scale. And then I get different modes based off different notes. That also works no matter what the key signature, which was not a thing in the Middle Ages, but became a thing. This is the stuff I don't understand. Well, I'm glad that you're here then. If I were to, uh, let's, let's go to our Sibelius real quick. Let's go to low and let's create a new section where I'm just gonna do some scales. So, key signature. If I'm in C major, this right here is a C major scale, but it's also in the key of no sharps and flats, that's also called Ionian. So I'll go ahead and put the diatonic, uh, tonic triad right here in the left hand. So that's how we know this is a major uh, mode. It's a major mode with not a raised scale degree four and a leading tone. Now, if I were to do all of that again, but I want to do this uh, based around F, then I would have Locri uh, not Locrian, Lydian. And the key here is that we have this B natural. That's, that's raised scale degree four. So why don't we put some lyrics in here, shall we? And then the key of F, this would be, oh, thank you. Th these are great lyrics. <laughs> Oh, I was hitting tab for some reason. That's what. Should I should I go into composition because of my ability to write lyrics? That's mean. And then right here, mixolydian.
In the key of G, this would be Do, Re, Mi, Fa. I think the next word should be Sol. And there's a lack of a leading tone. So the things you should note here is right here. Oh, hold on. Nope, shift. This right here, Fi, is different from the Fa of Ionian. And right here, Te is different from T of Ionian. Those are the major modes. Now let's let's go now to right here. Aeolian. I think this this right this time we should do uh meh. I think that would be a good lyric. Now we go to Dorian. And that's going to be similar to Aeolian, except La as uh, regular scale degree six, not lower scale degree six. So see what you're seeing here is a half step. La to te is a half step. And so to la is a whole step. So it's got a minor, a major tonality on scale degree six. And then right here, I call this Phrygian, but I'll spell it kind of weird, like a millennial names their kids. And then ra, do ra, meh. And there's one more. And that is Locrian, Do, Ra, uh, Me, Fa, Se, La, Te, Do. So this should help with understanding all these different rules here, but also helps you understand that uh, in the Middle Ages, these were the notes you would sing. But after that, and when people started to bring back modes and wc was a big one that did that you would you could put any key, key signature that you wanted and then the modes would transpose accordingly so if we went to say so check it out f ionian is uh you may not this may be mind-blowing but f ionian is the f major scale so uh whereas f lydian is uh the b flat well, B flat Lydian fits within the F major scale. So then C Mixolydian fits within the F major scale. D Aeolian is D minor. So G Dorian fits with what one flat as well, because we're raising E flat to E natural. And then over here, we've got Phryg a, a Phrygian fits with the one flat key signature because it's an A minor scale with lowered scale degree too. So if I were to take all of this again, Let's just, uh, let's add in, let's take all of the ones that I already copied and let's paste them one more time. There's one other way to do this. So the way we just did it was the key signature reflects the mode. Another way to do it is an F major scale, uh, since Lydian is a major mode, should have a flat. So then the B natural is communicating Lydian is an F major scale with the B natural. So then a G major scale would have an F sharp. So this F natural here is saying we're in G mixolydian. So Aeolian is A minor, so if you're doing modal, I guess you're just never using G sharps and no one's gonna really notice or care. And then D minor, we're showing Dorian. D Dorian is D minor with a raised scale degree six. Uh, e Phrygian is E minor with an F natural. And then finally, here's the fun one, uh, B minor where we cancel out both the sharps. So even doing it this way, it's it's just an extra step to be nice to the reform to to be nice to the performer. If you want them to understand, mixolydian is just G major with an F natural. Especially if you are a coward like I am and you decided to write a bit of Dorian, but also a little bit of not Dorian, so C naturals and C flats. Now we move on to the pentatonic scale. Whereas for minor, we start on law. The same exact scale, I just start on scale degree six. Hey, does that sound familiar? And then whole tone scale, I'll go ahead and put that in here. But Mr. Dunlap, you just did a C major scale. Don't worry, I got this. So whole step, whole step, whole step, whole step, whole step, and close enough. Now I'm gonna select these uh, black notes and inharmonically spell them. That's the same exact scale. That is the C, whole tone scale. The idea is that there are only whole steps or their equivalents. 
this right here is a diminished third and this right here is a diminished third. It's gonna happen somewhere. If you wanna be even more communicative, then you could do like F sharp is understandable. People know F sharp, people know B flat. And then just pick whichever one you want between G flat and G sharp and A flat. This is probably the best version if you want people to understand uh, what you're going for because people probably tend to play more A flats than G sharps. But then we take this whole thing and then we modulate it down a half step. These are different ways you could spell the B whole tone scale. So between all these examples, my preference would be this one right here for the B whole tone scale and probably this, no, probably, probably this one for the C whole tone scale. But you, you're going to use whatever you think is going to make life easiest for your performers because you don't want them walking out on you. So that's the whole tone scales. Now there's one more uh, scale that I didn't show you before as a th synthetic scale because it was not used in Impressionism. Octatonic slash diminished slash whole half or half whole scale. Mr. Dunlap, I don't like this at all. Well, tough. You're gonna have to do this on the exam, so we're gonna look at it. So the idea is that we're going to make an octatonic scale meaning eight notes. Diatonic scale is technically a seven note scale, unless you're Greek. So we're going to take this scale and we're going to start off by doing the half whole and then the whole half octatonic or diminished scale. And it's simply referring to the intervals we're going to use. So we're gonna start off by doing a half step so we could do a D flat or a C sharp, your choice, Sarah. Would you like a D flat or a C sharp as the next note? I'm choosing for you then, we're doing D flat. This is the octatonic scale, so we're going C to D flat as a half step, whole step, half step, whole step, half step, whole step, half step, whole step. This is the half, whole, diminished scale. Now we can take that same scale and make it into the ha whole half. I want you to note which notes I'm not changing. I didn't change C, E flat, F sharp, A, or C. The reason is, every time you add a half step to a whole step or a whole step to a half step, every other note is still the same. We're just creating minor thirds. What you should be hearing is, A fully diminished seven chord okay now listen to the other notes fully diminished seventh chord a fully diminished seventh chord so what's happening is because we're adding half steps to whole steps the entire time we're just creating two fully diminished seventh chords that are interlinking it's just a matter of which ones you'll always get one built off of the first note but the second note builds the, the other one. And in this case, it's a D-flat one versus a D. Now, the reason I went with D-flat as the second note is because I wanted E-flat as the third one. If I did it like this, 
that would also work, but it doesn't communicate the fact that E flat is a minor third up from C. D sharp from C doesn't really, there's no frame of reference in a total framework, whereas E flat from C is a minor third. And we want to build our octatonic scales in a way that performers can sort of understand how those notes relate to the first note, if at all possible, because then they're able to envision it, uh, the uh, inter phallic relationships on their instruments. Now we move on in the chapter to page 475, where we talk about extended tertian harmony. Okay, thirds. So there's a C major triad. We write C. Now we write C major seven. And now we add in the ninth. And guess what we call this? C major ninth. Now we add in the 13th. 11th, so we call this C major 11th. However, the most important note of a chord is the what. Once we've got our root, what part of a chord is definitive of the type of triad you're dealing with, assuming the fifth is perfect? Yes, the third. So this F is clashing with the third. There's a half step between E and F. So we're actually calling this a sharp 11. So when we add in that sharp 11th, and then we add in the 13th above that, we call this a, th a C major 13 sharp 11. Why don't I make this uniform? Yeah, there we go. So this is this. Is this. So building off thirds. Tertian is referring to what interval? The answer is thirds. Tur, third. Extended tertian means extending your chords by thirds, which is what we're doing. Now over here, if I have the uh, B flat here, a minor seventh over a major triad, this is a C7, which refers to the dominant quality of it. But when we do uh, popular notation of not analyzing function, but just saying what the chord is called, uh, guitar tabs, you might call it. This is a major triad with a, with a minor seventh, so we just call it C7. It's a C dominant seven. So when I add the ninth, it's a C9. When I add the sharp 11, it's a C7 sharp 11. And when I add the 13th, it's a C13 sharp 11. You might notice some similarities actually over here, C major seven sharp 11. So then when I make this minor, Oh no, I've run out of room. I'm gonna I'm gonna put in some E flats now. Now I don't need this F sharp anymore because I've lowered the third to an E flat. So F no, no longer uh, is a conflict. And we're gonna call that a C minor triad. Call this a C minor seven, C minor nine, C minor seventh, uh, C minor eleventh. I mean, because we don't have to say it's a sharp eleven if we don't sharp it, which means it's not even worth mentioning. Uh, the seventh. It's a weird thing where if you do anything with the eleventh, you've got to say the type of chord followed by what you've done with the eleventh. So we see a C major seven sharp eleven, C seven sharp eleven, or in this case just C minor eleventh. And over here is a C minor thirteenth. So this is all of it. This is extended tertian all the way. These are jazz chords. So the C major triad, C major seventh. C major ninth, C major seventh, sharp 11. I guess C major ninth, sharp 11. C major 13, sharp 11. C major triad, C dominant seventh, C ninth, uh, C ninth, sharp 11. C 13, 13th, sharp 11. C minor triad, C minor seventh, C minor ninth, C minor 11th, and C minor 13th. Yeah, how many notes are in a 13th chord? One, two, three, four five, six, seven. That's seven notes. Diatonic scales have seven notes. So if I take, say, this this chord right here, the C minor 13th, and I do a scale, I'm 
and then I take all the accidentals from that C minor 13, I end up with C Dorian. I do not want you to memorize this. I just want to point out that when you end up with seven notes, you run out of room because there's nowhere else to go. The next note would just be C after A. Uh, but the idea is then I could say, I could take any triad. Let's take like the C major nine sharp, uh, the C major 13 sharp 11, it's just an F sharp. So I take that. Any one of these notes could be placed with a C major triad. This is the part where you should stop zoning out. This is really important, understanding that if I add a D, that's, a, that's still a C chord. If I add a A, that's still a C chord. If I add a B, that's still a C chord. This is a C add two. This is oh. This is a C six or add six. You could call it if you wanted to. And this is a C major seven. There's also things you can do, like this is still a C chord because nothing's clashing in half steps with what I've got here. This right here is a C six nine chord. This is where I added the 6th here and the ninth right here. None of it's clashing. It's a very pleasing sound. That's also very pleasing right there, but check this one out. So sure, it may seem like I'm teaching a jazz class suddenly, but this actually applies when you look at the Ravel example uh, uh, rigaton. Uh, here's an F major 7, a D minor 11. That is a G13, but there's no third, so it's really just replacement five, which is where you take scale degree five and you put a four chord. Let's go ahead and add that in. So in the key of C, we take scale degree five and we put a four chord above it. There's another version of replacement five where it's a two chord. So right here, uh, this is four. In the key of C, this is two. Whereas right here, this is scale degree five. That's called replacement five. It's basically a suspended five because you've got Do. That's it. There, I don't know what happened there. But yeah, this is two different versions of replacement five. This one is more for uh, contemporary. And this is more for gospel. That's more gospel, whereas contemporary is just like. So uh, in, in Rigadon, we get this. What we're not hearing is the leading tone. So a replacement five is basically like a perma suspended five chord. And then we get the one chord. And then after that, we just add tones to a C major chord. That's a C major chord with a B. Same thing, but with a D thrown in. There's the same thing with an A thrown in. Same thing with an A thrown in. Now it's kind of an A minor 7. 
same thing here. And then replacement five based off of D because it's leading to a G chord. If you stretch things far enough, anything is a chord, as long as you've got a maximum of seven notes. Now let's get to planing and uh, planing polychords, polytonality. So planing means move everything moves together, maintaining the same intervals uh, slash chord shape shape two types of planing real planing uh, interval slash chord shape stays exactly the same diatonic planing intervals slash chord shape conform to the key an example would be, oh, nice. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. There we go. An example would be if I'm doing uh, triads in C major. I'm just moving around in C major and doing triads. So that's diatonic planing because we know category one creates a major triad, two is a minor, three is minor, four is major. Real planning would be everything's major, or everything's minor. That's real planning. Then we get polychords. Polychords equal uh, two chords mashed together so the example of polychords is uh, page 477 of the textbook that's an A flat major triad and an A major triad Actually, they're in contrary motion almost it's almost real planning that's happening at the same time except for a brief moment there's B minor triads in the right hand but otherwise it's real planning because we're maintaining major triads and same thing with the right hand it's real planning and polychords polytonality two keys mashed together it could be angry it sounds to me like a vast cavernous space My junior recital actually played a piece like that in a Muchinsky piano suite. Uh, polytonality would be, uh, for example, this piece by Bartok called Play Song, where we get two people singing a song together. They're in canon with each other, and they're also in two different keys. It's like Happy Birthday. there is the same thing as like when we sing happy birthday and everyone's off key which actually sounds the worst uh, the worst it ever sounds is when you have a bunch of trained musicians who know how to do that uh here's an example of diatonic planing from uh la cathedral uh well the sunken cathedral by wc All he's got is just open intervals, so perfect fourths and fifths. And then uh, we get to quartal and secundal harmony. We already talked about that. We're not going to come back to that. But 
So the idea of building off of fourths and fifths. That sort of thing. Uh, and there's a lot of other things in here we're not going to talk about. But we are going to listen to the another example from the sunken, sunken Cathedral. Because first thing is we're going to hear diatonic planing, where the hands move together and have parallel everythings. And then we're going to hear a moment of mixolydian, where we're going to lower scale degree 7. So here we go. Hold on. Middle pedal holds that note. hearing is the melody and then a device that actually was used a lot in the medieval period building chords underneath the melody extra credit uh, in your head but not actually in my grade book if you can come up with the name for that device that was used in the Middle Ages and that is a review of chapter 26 so devices used in the Impressionist period and similar uh, uh, movements going on at that same time.